Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily for January 30th. I hope you had a great weekend. Certainly all of us motor racing fanatics finally got over our withdrawal symptoms from not watching any races for the last couple of months. This weekend's 24 Hours of Daytona was an amazingly good race. Lots of wheel-to-wheel -wheel battling and when the checkered flag fell, Ford swept the top three positions in the DP prototype class while Porsche swept the first three spots in GT. It seems like every week a new customer satisfaction survey pops up. We have a pretty good idea which brands consumers are pleased with, but what about the dealers? Which automakers do they like best? Well, the NADA just released its latest dealer attitude survey. This twice yearly study pulled nearly 15,000 dealerships across the country. It measures things like franchise value and automaker policy decisions. Add it all up and for the third time in a row, Hyundai topped the charts. Subaru, Lexus, Kia and Mercedes-Benz rounded out the top five spots. But you know what? I sure wish they would release which automakers the dealers hate to do business with. Car sales in China slowed down a lot last year, but that's not the case for luxury cars. While the overall market grew by about two and a half percent, the luxury segment rocketed up by 30 percent and it shows no signs of slowing down. Audi, the top luxury brand in China, sold over 300,000 vehicles there and it hopes to top a million units within three years. More good news for Chrysler. Next week, the company is set to add some 1,600 workers at its Belvedere assembly plant to start building the 2013 Dodge Dart. The facility is also home to the Jeep Compass and Patriot. The hiring blitz has already started and the new crew will begin working sometime in July. Chrysler is adding shifts at other plants as well as demand for new cars starts to recover. And yet, selling cars in California just got more difficult. Last week, the California Air Resources Board approved new mandates that one out of every seven new cars sold in the state must be zero emission by 2025. The new rules say 1.4 million electric or hybrid cars must be on the roads by that time. It also calls for a 75% reduction in smog-forming pollutants and a 34% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. So why is it that California can pass its own rules? That's because the state started regulating emissions before the feds and the Supreme Court grandfathered it in to make its own rules. Hey, here's something that's pretty cool. Artist Bo Lundvang is creating pictures of automobiles by rusting out pieces of sheet metal. Autoblog reports that he starts out with a 40 by 20 inch piece of sheet metal wrapped in white vinyl. He then cuts out the profile of the image, removes the negative and lets it rust. Once it's to his liking, he seals it with several layers of clear coat to protect the piece of art. No prices are listed, but you can click the link in today's show notes to check out more of his work. Coming up next, we'll take a look at all the aerodynamic tweaks they made to the Chevy Malibu Eco. Reducing exhaust emissions, aerified diesel particulate filters, high filtration, low back pressure, small package size, excellent durability, DowAerify.com. The cheapest way to make a car get better fuel economy is to make it more aerodynamic. And with cafe standards getting tougher all the time, now automakers are adding bits and pieces to improve aero that they pretty much ignored in the past. Let's take a look at how GM engineers tweak the Chevrolet Malibu Eco to come up with a coefficient of drag of only 0.29. So if you start at the front end of the car, you look, you can see we have a, the classic Chevy two-port uh, front end grille design. And the upper two openings are either completely blocked or partially blocked by what we call passive 
uh, plastic lockers. And if you move down to the sort of hidden lowermost opening, we're really excited about the, the auto grill shutters, the active grill shutters in, there, in uh, that opening. And those open and close on demand based on a proprietary algorithm that we have looks at uh, vehicle speed, ambient temperature, and, uh, and fan duty cycle. Um, keeping with the theme of uh, engineering type enablers, things that customer may, may or may not see, if you look underneath the car, we have a full width air dam that's at the bottom of the fascia uh, that hides the, any low hanging underbody components from the oncoming flow. Behind that we have um, front tire deflectors or mini tire dams in, in the front face of the tires. These reduce the pressure loading on the front face of the tires and uh, really help reduce drag as well. And uh, something that we're really excited about having on a mid-sized car is the underbody panels. We have a set of four panels that cover almost 50% of the underbody of the car and uh, really make the bottom very slick and reduce the underbody drag contribution. Uh, moving back up to the, to the exterior surface and the front end, one part that was really challenging from us was the, uh, the parabolic shape of the front corner uh, in, a, in a plan view. So if you're looking down on the, on the front corner, you'll see you have a nice smooth curve that allows the oncoming flow to, that approaches the front of the car to turn the corner and stay planted on the body side. Uh, moving rearward in the car, uh, there's two more things that I'd like to hit on briefly. One is the, what we call, we have a, well, we have a beautiful integrated deck lid spoiler. And um, that's one of the things that's fundamental for a low drag car in, in this segment. Having a notch angle, the angle from the trailing edge of the deck lid to the top of the backlight is extremely important from a basic shape standpoint in aerodynamics and uh, it's always a big win to get that straight out of the studio. It just took minor tweaks and we, and we were very happy to, uh, you know, to, get that, to get that done and incorporate it into the design from an aerodynamic standpoint. And one little tweak that was also really important was the uh, fine separation edge and the outboard edge of the tail lamp. Uh, you notice these tail lamps look very similar thematically to what we have on the Camaro and we're very excited about that but we're also able to make them functionally functional from an aerodynamic standpoint as well. You know, aero numbers are like horsepower ratings. Unless the exact same test procedures are used following the exact same equipment, the numbers can vary greatly. Some automakers are making aerodynamic claims for their cars that can be called fairly optimistic. Hey, don't forget that you can subscribe to our daily email blast to remind you every time that AutoLine Daily or any of our other shows are coming out. Just go to our website, autoline.tv, and click on the box on the left column that says Daily Email. It is convenient and it is free. And that wraps up this show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.